Hello all, welcome to our session, Scaling Enterprise Integrations with Platform Events and Message Queues. Here is our familiar Safe Harbor slide, reminding that customers should make your purchasing decisions based on the features that are currently available. And presenters for today, my name is Ramya Ramuti. I work as a Managing Director of Salesforce Development at Teach for America. I'm a technical architect and lead. Uh, we have two Salesforce orgs with a wide variety of enterprise applications. And this is my team member, Shanti Anga Reddy. She was also a technical architect. Agenda for today, we are going to see what platform events are. How are they different from the publisher subscribing models like streaming API, which you would have known of. And then use cases of programmatic approaches as to how easy it is to define, subscribe, as well as publish those events. And finally, you should be able to walk away with code samples that you yourself can start in your organization. So let's take a look at quickly about the evolution of enterprise architecture. So we live in a fast-paced world. Users need that instant access to data. Applications can no longer live in silos. So traditionally, how organizations responded to this need is with a point-to-point -point uh, point -point integration, wherein like one sender sends a message to one consumer, more like a one-to-one -one relationship. Very easily manageable when there are lesser number of systems, but let's say if there are single point failures, then getting responses was really hard. And then came the service-oriented architecture, wherein it's based on a you know about like request response mechanism. Client initiates a request, wait for the response until that operation is completed on the server side. Again, works great. Greater encapsulation, reusable services, but there are wait times so resources get tied up. Finally, then we came into this event-driven architecture, more like a publisher-subscriber model. So the service provider provides these in the form of messages onto a message bus, and the consumer or the subscriber here will listen to those messages. Was great for asynchronous communication because like the message itself will provide a wide degree of diversity. It, it will take care of your queue messaging. So even if your service is not up, the subscriber can continue to listen to those events. And greater amount of decoupling, so how heterogeneous or distributed our systems are, you can continue to add your number of subscribers and publishers to the system. Salesforce Enterprise Messaging Platform, it offers a variety of event-driven architectures, and the latest addition to it is the platform events that you are seeing. So in Salesforce, right now, instead of message bus, we have this called as an event bus. And you can use your own native features, like your triggers, or your process builders, or even like data loader tools, that you can use to publish or subscribe to the events, both on as well as off the platform. So how do we define platform events? Well, you, you're all familiar with S objects, right? So platform events can be defined like S objects. There are certain differences, like instead of underscore underscore C, the API name will end in underscore underscore, underscore E. And certain field types that are allowed are like checkbox, date, number, and text. And uh, you cannot create layouts like your S objects, but you can still specify FLS at your fields that you define as part of your event definition. We cannot use SQL because the events published are not stored as database records, but and once published, they are not like editable. So how do we publish those events onto the event bus? So since we are creating it like an S object, you can go ahead and create an instance of that and use your event bus dot publish to publish onto the event bus. Outside, you can continue to use APIs like your REST or bulk or SOAP. And once you're publishing those events, right, like the order of delivery is guaranteed. So by mistake, even if you're done, you will always take care that you will get access to the latest events in that. And events published are non-transactional in the sense that they cannot be rolled back. How about subscribing to events? The good news is we can create an after insert trigger on the platform events, which is something like not available in streaming API yet. And out-of-box features, like your process builders, could be used. And outside, we use what is called as an Comet D protocol. Comet D is a scalable web event routing bus, which you might have heard of that. Uh, and it makes use of a Bayes client protocol. So the, typically, how do you subscribe is like uh, you use the channel name as slash event, slash the event name that you created. 
Java folks may be familiar with EMP connectors. Again, that's another way how you can subscribe to events. So the triggers that you write which to subscribe to this event are run as automated process user. So if you want to debug it, you run the debug logs for this automated process user. And events can be refired using eventbus.retryable assumption. And events can be replayed, which is very useful. Like let's say the subscriber is offline, for instance, and you can use this replay ID parameter and replay from that point in time. Events currently are typically available for the last 24 hours. And so how is it different from the existing subscriber models like streaming API that's already there? So as we saw, platform events are like first class objects. So you define your own structure. You can create your own fields as part of your event definition, which is something, now a streaming MPI is something dif based on the SOCL query, right? Like your push topic model. So it's, the structure is dependent on the fields that are involved in the query. As we saw, you can use your user interface to manage declaratively all the fields as part of your event definition, which is something like not available in streaming API yet. And it's more flexible because you can use your FX triggers or your process builders or data loader tools in addition to your APIs. Use cases time. So uh, let's see. Today we are going to see like two use cases. The first use case is how do you relay your any event changes that are happening in your Salesforce to your external app. And in the second use case, we are going to take you through the entire life cycle of both publishing and subscribing to events both on and off the platform. So in our organization, Salesforce is our single source of truth. So we had to relay, like let's say we have a contact, they become an alumni, and they, if the region changes, we had to relay this event changes, region changes constantly to our in-house apps. So initially what we did, we we ended up creating triggers as usual, but we ran into this governor limits on callouts. It's just 100 callouts are allowed. And then we relied on the batch, but since it's like on a scheduled basis, there'll be a delayed sync. So this bad business wanted real time updates. They want everything as instant, right? So platform events kind of came to our rescue for this in constantly relaying this event changes to our in-house apps. So at the end of this use case, you must be able to understand how easy it is to define an event, publish an event into the event bus inside Salesforce. And for our demo purposes, we are going to use a Node.js app. So you should be able to understand like how, how do you connect to Salesforce, how can we subscribe to that event, and how to stream the data, and finally send it to the live feed. So defining an event, as I said, you can do it like an S object. So you can note how the API ends in underscore underscore E, and you can create your own fields. You can define that. In my case, what I'm interested in is just a contact name, the old region and the new region change. And then I go on to create an instance of that event that I created, and I use the event boss dot publish to publish onto the event bus inside Salesforce. So it's damn easy with that. And in the Node.js app, I'm using Enforce. You might have heard of it. It's a Node.js module to connect to your force.com APIs. So I created a connected app, use that client ID and client, sale, uh, client secret. And then I'm authenticating using my username, password, and token. So once I establish that connection to Salesforce, I'm using this Comet D. Comet D, as I said, is a web event routing bus, particularly very useful for implementing all this publisher subscribing patterns. So I use this access token, and once the handshake is successful, note how I'm using Comet D.subscribe slash event slash the platform event name, which in this case is region change underscore E. And once my handshake is successful, in my case, I'm streaming the data using socket IO. Again, socket IO is something that you would have heard about, like event-based bidirectional communication layer. It allows developers to send messages without having to worry about cross-border compatibilities. And once the data is coming, I'm sending it to my HTML. In my case, I'm just prettifying my views using my Reveal.js. Reveal.js is something that helps you to create spectacular HTML slides. It's free. It has a lot of features. They are responsive in nature. And you can create like iOS's trial swipes or something like that. And in my, finally, in my live feed, so this is my first page. And then like let's say when I have a region change, this is how I'm going to get it instantly in my live feed. And that brings us to the end of our use case. And my colleague is going to take us through our second use case. Over to you. Thank you, Ramya. Um, good afternoon, everyone. 
hope you are enjoying your dream force so without further ado i will get into this uh, publishing to social media so for this demo let's imagine that our team wants to create a, a campaign and publish which both publishes to the uh, platform event bus and gets the response back so uh, to accomplish that first we are going to have a salesforce campaign publish to the platform event bus next we'll have the no chase app subscribe to this message bus and post the message to the twitter third um, when a user responds no chase can push the result back to the message bus finally we'll see how salesforce listens to this message and acts on the data that is it creates a campaign member and associates the campaign member to that particular campaign so first let's cover the process of having a salesforce campaign push to this message bus this involves setting up a message bus and creating a messages to send as you have noted earlier so we simply have to define a, a event for my use case i have created a social media underscore underscore e with all the structure so to uh, get all the campaign information next uh, this is the campaign in the salesforce we would like to post this message requesting volunteers to sign up so once the user pushes the button uh, the apex code will create an instance of social media and then publish it to the event bus so the same thing that's highlighted here um, and once now it's published great now what so we are on the node.js node.js is actively listening to this message uh, for all the platform events that are published to this message bus and then it will subscribe so how it does so this is the end result so this is a twitter message that node.js subscribes to the message and posts to the twitter so the node so for this app also we use the node.js so these are the basic libraries that we have used to connect to subscribe publishing and posting to the twitter and handling the web pages so uh similar to uh, ns force uh, for this app we use js force which is pretty much similar to ns force to connect to the sales force uh, with the same oauth credentials uh, similar process and then it goes and subscribes to the events uh, here first once it comes to the subscribe to events it we need to configure the commit d which is pretty similar and then here as you can see it subscribes to the social media extracts the data from the payload here is how we extract the campaign data and then we uh, post this message to the twitter we are calling a twitter post method now um, for some of you whom you are not aware of how to create a twitter account so you create a uh, go for a developer right so you go to apps.twitter.com and then you create a project which generates the oauth tokens and once you create you get those information and import that to a file so you have the twitter instantiated now we'll get to um, and now it is instantiated the message that we received from the campaign platform message bus is posted to the twitter okay now it's posted now what so we want to see how node.js uh, sends the result back to the message bus and how salesforce will act on the data so in our case uh, the user interested user clicks on the link it comes up with this web form where they are uh, you know interested in signing up for this campaign in our case thomas edison is really interested to be a volunteer at uh, teach for america or for dreamforce for that matter uh, so once they submit nodejs is actively listening for this message so it gets all the uh, uh, web data into this particular method and again remember we create an, an uh, access to the salesforce we have the access token we use the same access token to uh, push the data back to the message bus please note that pushing the data is similar to how you create a record in any s object record uh, s object so we map the form data to this s object fields that we are interested in and we'll get to that eventually and then once the form data is uh, pushed to the uh, salesforce the user is redirected to the thank you page uh, and here is the definition uh, this is the campaign member event which we are trying to collect the campaign members who are signing up for the form so this is the structure of the fields that we are interested in collecting and here is a trigger which is actively listening to the message bus the after insert 
So it will listen to the message and act on it. You can do whatever you want. You can have the process builder, but since this is complicated, we uh, ended up using the trigger because we have to create a, see, as you can see, this is a form and it creates a contact and then it creates a campaign member uh, and associates this campaign member to the uh, campaign. So now we covered how to implement an end-to-end -end process to use the message bus to interact between Salesforce and the external apps. However, we have only scratched the surface of the possible ways to use this functionality. An enterprise service bus provides a great deal of value to many different kinds of organizations. Users monitoring sales or service channels will appreciate the opportunity to do real-time monitoring of key process indicators. Enterprise Service Bus ensures real data is collected reliably with no loss, which is critical for companies doing Internet of Things. E-commerce and supply chain management companies rely on data broadcasting capabilities to multiple reliant systems. So thank you for your time. Before, uh, I would like to recap what we discussed today. We learned how to leverage the platform events to scale the enterprise applications. And you saw how easy it is to set up end-to-end -end process and then um, pu to publish, subscribe, and um, use that message bus. So it's, uh, we have these resources. Make sure you take the picture of this, because this also provides the code uh, to our second demo. Uh, Trailhead is definitely a good way to start, uh, uh, get started on your projects. And uh, it's very simple, very easy, and very reliable. You can just get it started. Uh, for that matter, we were able to put this up, the demo, in, uh, uh, over a weekend. So I'm sure you can do that as well. Thank you so much for your time and attention. If you have any questions, uh, we have three minutes, or you can catch us later.